Welcome everyone to the debut edition of MC True Long Island Story. I am your host, the internet champion, always ready, Matt Cardona. Yeah, and I'm also here, Smart Mark Sterling, your producer, producer of the Major Pod Network, and I'm excited uh, to talk about this. I'm, I'm excited. We talked about it in the in the trailer episode, but here we are, episode one. Yeah, and what's so, I don't know what the word is, not ironic, but what's the word here? That exactly 10 years ago, to the day that this podcast comes out, yeah. I recorded the first ever Z True Long Island story. What's the word? Not It's not ironic. It's, uh, <laughs> we say figure fate? I don't yeah. know what it is. Yeah, yeah. It's figure fate. Weird? Coincidence? Weird. Well, not a coincidence because we planned right. the drop. Right. It's neat. And um, there's more things like that that we're going to, you know, in my research, I figured it out. There's just like so many weird to the day type things. So we'll, yeah, we'll so talk about that. Let's get a couple things out of the way. First of all, guys, um, you're either listening to the podcast Yep. Or you're watching on YouTube. What's up? Uh, what's up, guys, if you're watching on YouTube? So this is going to both places. Originally, I wanted to do a reunion episode that would drop today, mm. a reunion video, and Mark and I loosely discussed it, but we didn't get that far along in the planning, and then Mark presented this idea of the podcast, which I loved, which will hopefully lead to a reunion episode. Mm -hmm. So this was going to be strictly MC, True Long Island Story, the podcast. Um, and then I said, well, why not put it on YouTube because we have to record it anyway and we do the Zoom anyway to record ourselves. Why not put it on YouTube? So guys, if you're looking for skits, there's no skits here. This is just right. us recording the podcast. Uh, and if you're listening to the podcast, if you want to watch us talking about it, right. uh, go to youtube.com slash major pod network. Not my old YouTube channel, uh, only here on youtube.com slash major pod network. I think but it just think makes we, sense, the YouTube, really. I mean, that's where the show started. That's yeah. where this revolution began, so we'll yeah. bring it back. So is this is this a sequel? What is this? Mm, I think this is a spinoff, kind of. Spinoff. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Spinoff um, YouTube podcast, for sure. Yeah. Um, so I think we should kind of almost redo the trailer a little bit, so right. people are just tuning in now. What is this? Uh, yep. So Mark, I'll let you explain it the way you pitched it to me. Okay, so this is like a big thing in podcasts now where uh, people who sort of lived a, a show or a movie um, sort of like years later go back and really talk about the ins and in the outs of, of the creating of that show. You can't really necessarily like be talking about the making of Breaking Bad while Breaking Bad's happening. However, years later, you can revisit that. And people are doing it now like you love Entourage, the podcast, you turn that on. You turned me on to Victory the Podcast. Victory Everybody the podcast. listen to that, guys. I love it's so it. great. If you like Entourage, right. I personally love The Office Ladies. They do the same thing. They break down The Office episodes. It's so funny. Uh, and I thought you should do the same thing for the first 100 episodes of uh, Z True Long Island Story and talk about just like the journey that you had making these episodes, but also the behind the scenes of making the episodes. A lot yeah. changes in 100 episodes. It's two years. Yeah, so when you presented the idea to me, I thought instantly, this is great. And then I thought, wait a minute, Z True Long Island Story and Entourage aren't exactly the same thing. Mm. But uh, I still think it will be fun, uh, a deep dive episode by episode, exactly 10 years later. Yep. Um, we're not doing any of these in advance, none in the can. It's actually going to be 10 years later. Yep. And this isn't going to be like a bitter, negative, anti-WWE podcast. If you're looking for that, just turn it off. It's going to be my story. Uh, and my version of the story, will there be some drama? Absolutely. And I'll tell my version of it. Uh, but for the most part, this is just, it's a story, right? And it's a beautiful story of 100 episodes. Uh, and really, if I can inspire just one person to take a chance and bet on themselves, then this whole this whole thing will be worth it. Right. Well, you don't want to say it, but I mean... Did the same amount of people watch this show that they watched Entourage? Probably not. But in the wrestling world, two professional wrestlers to wrestling fans, this was a big deal and really uh, shaped the, the future content. People that are creating content and getting themselves over on the internet now, you know, a lot of people credit you. And this is not me saying that. That's not you saying that. That is people saying that. Right. Um, so, so this was an important thing in professional wrestling. And we'll talk about that. And I have a lot of questions uh, that, that go with that. But 
So, yeah, I mean, without the show, first of all, we wouldn't be here doing this show. Right. 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 Uh, I don't think my, well, I know for sure my WWE career wouldn't have been as long. It wouldn't have been as successful. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have, I always say still here. I wouldn't have the staying power if it wasn't for that show and the connection I built with the audience, my fans who are still with me uh, to this day. So I thank them very much, but we'll get into all that. And, you know, I just watched episode one back like 15 minutes ago. I have notes. Yep. Yep. Um, Cringe city. My God. I have a, a bad memory, but I think watching these episodes will be almost like me writing a book. Me, This podcast will be my book, and maybe I'll write a book afterwards. Um, but I said in the trailer that I had never watched all 100 episodes back, um, except for the time I made episode 100. I watched them all back, 1 through 99, to to take notes and to, you know, I did like a montage in the beginning. But since then, which was, I think, 2013, I haven't watched them back. Maybe I watched episode 100 back uh, once or twice. Um, and I, I just watched episode one back when you told me about this idea. So I've watched that twice in the past month. But other than that, I'm not going to watch these uh, in advance. I'm going to do it every single week with you guys. And I encourage you to do that. Hopefully, WWE doesn't take them down. Mm. Um, <laughs> we'll figure something out. But the first, the first 50, I believe are on my old YouTube channel, which is still my channel, uh, youtube.com slash the Matt Cardona, except I have no, I guess I do have creative control of the channel, but Mark, you, you can explain to the people since Zack Ryder was a WWE IP and we'll get into this in further episodes, like they flagged the channel and the majority of the videos on that channel. So that's why this series is on the major pod network. So we get the money. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. And I think later on you were showing some footage. You would use footage and pictures right. of WWE, so then they would flag that stuff, obviously. But it's interesting, this, the episodes that they did flag, you know, that are just Zack Ryder stuff or whatever. So um, it's on there. The other thing that I, I did want to mention, uh, you know, there's a lot of podcasts out there that talk about historical wrestling things. Um and it's really insane to me to think that 2011 was 10 years ago. That's and that's the most bizarre part about it. <laughs> 10 years. Ten that's a years. long time ago. And the wrestling business has changed uh, insane. There was so no like, AEW 10 years ago. There was TNA was was you know on TV like main TV. You know WWE was firing on all cylinders. So this is like a snapshot of pro wrestling as well in the year 2011, it, which is interesting through the I eyes mean, of you. When I started this podcast, I'm sorry, when I started the YouTube show, I was right. 25. Like, the 10-year gap between me being 15 and 25 felt like eternity. But right. the 10-year gap between 25 and 35, like a snap of a <laughs> right. For right? sure. Yeah, crazy. 100%. Yeah. So, All right. Yeah, Mark, you have, I have some notes. But okay. You, you're the producer here. This was, I said, hey, if we're going to do this, you got to do the Conrad research yeah so, I, all right so yeah. i feel like for this one we really have to go go back uh okay. and figure out like why we got to the point that that we did so february 17th 2011 you launch this podcast show which is also interesting and we'll talk about this in a year from now but i just know i just saw on twitter that nine years ago was when you got thrown off the stage <laughs> so it's just so many of these like you know, 10 years, nine years, like these weird, uh, things that happen. Yeah. So, um, we don't own the footage, right? right? It's very complicated. Like I have all the original footage. Like I just, uh, like booted up my old laptop. It worked. Cause I wanted to see, okay, when did I actually film episode one? Mm. And I filmed it on February 17th, 2011. I must've did it and put it up that day. Holy cow. All right. Yeah. Well, well, we'll talk about that. So I have like that footage. So it's weird. Like, I mean, I made that myself. How do I not own that? But I don't own the published footage. And the character, which is weird. It's very confusing. So I don't know what... We're going to do some... uh, If only you knew a lawyer, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, (laughs) Prisco. Uh, No. um, So for now, we'll do some screenshots. Guys, this podcast, just like the original YouTube show, just like the major wrestling podcast, it will evolve. Yeah. Right? It will evolve over time. So so stay tuned. Uh, First thing before we, we get into this, you want to talk about the broski of the week? Yeah, I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring back the Broski of the week, uh, starting with next week. Um, 
Actually, you know what? Starting with today, Mark, you yeah. are the broski of the yes! week. Yes! I know you <laughs> yes! tried so many times during the uh, the old school era, but Mark, you are officially the broski of the week. Awesome. Um, <laughs> Thank but you. But going forward, yeah. to be the broski of the week, leave a review on this podcast. Five stars, please. And... Uh, Ha- uh, screenshot it and hashtag tweet it to us. Uh, tweet to us using the hashtag Broski of the Week. Perfect. And I will choose one, and you will be the Broski of the Week, and I will send you a Broski of the Week magnet. Phenomenal. Oh, Actually, it's a sticker. It's a sticker. I'm sorry, guys. It's a sticker. Did you sticker. accidentally buy the sticker? No, I got. <laughs> I figured sticker. More people use stickers, I think, than magnets. Okay. Uh, all right, and then I, I. So I really want to talk about your career, and we've talked about it on a lot of podcasts. Uh, we look, guys. I don't know if you know this, but we do the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast together. Yeah, um, <laughs> check it out. Uh, we t- we've talked about this stuff many times all over the place, Patreon, et cetera, et cetera. So, if you listen to that, we might rehash some things, but we anticipate a lot of new listeners here. So, I will tell you, I am uh, Mark Sterling. I am the producer of the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast, Major Pod Network. I'm also an independent professional wrestler, the most famous professional wrestling lawyer. Uh, I am for a former filmmaker, and I used to be a marketing manager. So that's who I am. And me and Matt met through Brian. Uh, you know, I was one of Brian's students, and then we started. Brian the, Myers, Kurt Hawkins, for those yes, who don't know. Yes, we started the major wrestling figure podcast together. So yada yada yada. Three years later, here we are. All right. So uh, you were obsessed with wrestling your whole life, um, and just knew that you always wanted to be a pro wrestler. Was there a, was there a moment that flipped there? You no. get all the awesome pictures of you with figures and things like that. Yeah. I mean, I always wanted to be a wrestler. People always ask, like, what was the first wrestling figure you got? Or what's your first memory, the first match you watched? I don't remember because I was so young. Mm. Um, just my entire life, even as a baby, just playing with the wrestling figures, watching it. So I don't recall the very first. But I every memory I have from childhood involves wrestling, whether it be going to wrestling shows, uh, playing with wrestling figures or dressing up as a wrestler and wrestling with my brother and the wrestling buddies in my parents' bed, uh, you know, and I just never grew out of it. Uh, so many kids did. And then, um, you know, with the attitude era, they came back, but then mm. they, they, they fell out again and I yep. didn't, yep. uh, and, you know, and that's when I discovered backyard wrestling and I, t- <laughs> I took backyard wrestling really, really serious, uh, which is so, but, but you were bizarre. doing fig feds that were very serious first. Yeah, and then I, I wrestling figure fig feds where I'd book my own storylines, um, I just wrestling was my life. Hmm. Um, and especially when it wasn't popular, that's when I got more invested. Like the figures became like an obsession to me, not just collecting them, but, but forming these figure feds and booking these storylines. Um, and then how, later, how annoyed were you when people like didn't want to come to the backyard show and be like, well, you know, we're kind of, we're, we're, this new video game came out and they didn't want to come. And oh, you're like, how course, could you I, not want to Yeah. Come? I mean, there was a couple guys who fell out of it, uh, you know, but for the majority, the roster stayed the same. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> but even with the backyard wrestling, I took it so seriously because I just loved it. I loved wrestling. I knew that was the only thing um, I ever wanted to do with my life. Um, and then when it came to you know college and and uh, applying to colleges and, and you know the pressure and what am I going to do when I grow up? Like I'm going to be a wrestler. I'm going to wrestle for WWE. Uh, everyone thought I was crazy. And, and they were right. I mean, looking back, when I'm a senior in high school, I think I wrestled. I did wrestle in high school. I sucked. I didn't take it seriously. I was doing like tilt the world, like head scissors <laughs> in the back of the room or tornado DDTs or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I was like 160 pounds. And back then, it was like a, definitely a big man's business. Yeah. But, you know, I, I just had that dream. And I'm not – right now, you know, I – condition myself to be positive but back then i definitely wasn't i'm not a naturally positive person but for some reason i just knew like i am going to be a professional wrestler all right so beyond that though where is your confidence level then like i'm going to be a successful professional wrestler like it's easy to say like i will train and have a few matches but were you like Oh, it, I'm going to be in the WWE. I, I'm going to be a champion. What, was that oh, kind of yeah, like? 100 percent, really, 100 percent. I would like, you know, uh, do matches. Like I, I'll never forget, like having matches with myself, like the Invisible Man wrestling the Vi- Invisible Man, pretending it was Edge, and we're at WrestleMania. You right. know, and then it's so crazy that years later I'm helping him or trying to help him at a WrestleMania. Right. Um, but I told myself when I signed up to wrestling school when I was 18, I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll give myself till I'm 30 before I make it. 
you know, before I figure out what I want to do. I didn't want to, you know, go to college and, and party. I didn't want to, you know, be a cop or a teacher. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Right, right, right. You know, that's just not what I wanted to do. I didn't want a plan B. I wanted to just go full steam ahead. Right. So then, uh, you know, you go from backyard, you train at NYWC. Um, you're not really training or on the indies for very long. I think we no. figured it out the other day, two years uh, un- until you get signed. Um, what about on the indies? It Same mentality, like this is just a, a pit stop. Like, Oh, yeah. Once, once you know, I met Brian uh, and we became a tag team, um, I knew, okay, we – we're gonna, we got to get to WWE. It was always my goal to be in WWE. Uh, I told this story on a, a major pod podcast where like uh, NYWC, the indie promotion that we came from, they wanted to split us up and I would go for the interstate title, get my big interstate title push. And I'm like, no, because I want to keep teaming with Brian. I don't want to just like wrestle like once a month in front of my friends and family here at NYWC. I want to, you know, wrestle elsewhere, make a name for myself, get to WWE. Right. That was um, your meal and- ticket, the tag team. Yeah, and, and Brian and I, uh, we were getting a lot of flack on the indies for being too WWE, right. uh, which I never really took as an insult. Uh, duh, right, right, <laughs> like right. that's where, that's where I want to be. Um, and we even were gonna be like uh, almost giving into that and be called Myers and Matthews Entertainment because my name was Brett Matthews on the indies. He was Brian Myers, and we we're gonna take the WWE logo, flip it upside down, and be Myers and Matthews Entertainment. And before before we could even start that, we got signed. Um, was there any uh this Zack Ryder character that, you know, launches the YouTube show? Is there any of that on the indies? Are you doing that at all? Kind of as like a heel. Uh when because Brian and I were like these white meat baby faces and it sucked. It yeah. sucked. It, it just it sucked. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It just sucked. Yep, for sure. And then when we were able to be heels, uh I'm wearing the headband there, the glasses, you know, the tanning, all that stuff. So the boy like band the, stuff, yeah. The, the 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 blonde tips it's all it's all yeah. kind of there the purple it's all there right all right so then um which is very interesting you said you launched this february 17th but february 24th 2006 uh five years before you launched the show you're signed uh that's why i have you because I, I didn't even know that i knew it yeah. was february and then um two years you're in developmental whatever you're tra- you guys are still tagging Right. Uh, yeah. So is, that was the, the weird thing because the the signing, uh, there was a WWE dot com application for a tryout before a house show. Like they don't really do those. I think right. there was only a handful at the time. Uh, and uh, Mikey Whipwreck, I believe, because Tommy Dreamer was working in the talent relations department for WWE. I think Mikey Whipwreck let Tommy know that we had applied, and he kind of got us to the tryout at least. Yeah. Um, and at the tryout, I thought we sucked. I thought we did horrible. <laughs> I thought it wasn't good, but at the time I was 20 years old and I thought to myself, well, you know what? That I got my first look by WWE at 20. I'll be fine. You know, like I'll get another one soon. Right. I'm, I'm um, sure they saw young guys, athletic, putting on a good hold, you know, that kind well, of thing. I think it also helped that we were wearing matching gear. Right. And like they got to sign somebody. Who are they going to sign? Uh, well, let's just sign the tag team guys. I don't right. know. We were young enough. And that's what developmental at the time was. You just take some guys, take a bunch of guys, and hopefully some of them stick. Right. For sure. Well, you guys are, you do that for two years. I'm sure it felt like a very, very long time. So that's another thing. It was so weird. So it's really just one year um, at Deep South Wrestling in McDonough, Georgia. And then Deep South Wrestling closes. And they send the majority of the people to FCW, which is just forming. Mm -hmm. And then they send a handful of us to OVW. But literally in that week of moving to OVW, we debut on the main roster. Okay. And we're like, uh, do we still have to go to OVW? Well, yeah, you do. So we went to OVW for like another six or seven months. Right. So. And when you say main roster, was that ECW or? ECW, which then it. We got traded to SmackDown in the trade. So we're a main roster. We're SmackDown, ECW, whatever, and OVW at the same time. Right. And then you, the first thing you're doing is that exact thing you hated, which was the, that white meat baby face <laughs> yes. tag team. So that's what we were doing in Deep South Wrestling. And it was working because it was like the South. It was McDonough, Georgia. It was working. But every week or every other week, we'd have something called like promo day where we would 
you you get a one minute promo and they would send it to the the office, the WWE office, the writers. Who know, who knows if they're watching? You right. think they are? Whatever. Right. And we were pitching to be like the saviors of tag team wrestling, almost like uh, Rougeau brother style, where we're so over the top babyface that we're heels. Right. That's what we were pitching, and that's the skits we were doing, and that's how we thought we were getting called up. But no, you're just white meat babyface major brothers again on which, ECW which doesn't uh, have a tag team title <laughs> it was supposed to it was supposed to have a tag team division it didn't happen right so that was a flop moved to smackdown a flop um right and also so, we were still at OVW at the time and thank god we were because we knew that the the writers were coming down to like check out everybody and uh, yeah. uh, we went up to Michael Hayes who was at smackdown we said i know you guys are coming down tomorrow what do you want to see from us? We're already here. And he said, like, show me something different. That was a horrible impersonation. But that's when we we already were thinking of doing or pitching this edgehead gimmick yeah. based on entourage. Like we would be like almost a turtle and a drama or two turtles, whatever. Right. The edge being Vinny Chase. Yeah. And we had all the gear, you know, the shirts, the hats, whatever. And the next day at OVW, we came out to the edge music. We pitched it. The writers loved it. Now when you we say gear, it. like you literally own Edge merch. We yeah, it was like our major brother gear, but right. we had like Edge t shirt or yeah, the yeah, Edge yeah. hat, the beanie, yeah. whatever it was. And then we cut a promo. I think it was like a fake phone call, like getting Edge's coffee order or something like that. Okay. So the next step was having to get Edge to like it and to want to do it because he didn't need us. We needed him, and and luckily, you know, he brought us on board, or else we probably would have been released. In 2007. Well, how does that you know? go? Like, how do you? I think Brian got his email and sent him an email. <laughs> Edge at gmail.com. Yep. Whatever it is. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And then so he seemingly just like was like, who the watched this crappy thing that you sent? Like filmed. On I don't a- even know if he saw that, uh, but I think he, you know, saw the vision of what it could be. Right. You know, I see. I see. Because okay. we had pitched to do. The, whatever happened at that Armageddon pay-per-view, pretty much exactly like that. Maybe there's a couple of minor differences, but where we're dressed as Edge, we come out from under the ring. You think Undertaker's beating up Edge. You think Batista's beating up Edge. But no, the real Edge is untouched and ends up winning the title. And that's what happened. Right. So I said February 24th, 2006, is when you get signed. December 16th, 2007. So not even two years. Uh, that's when you do the you start the Edge Eds. Um, whatever, great run, La Familia, phenomenal. You guys get a figure out of it. Yeah, <laughs> just and, and, very and recently. Time, time is 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 moving, but time is like on our side. We're so young, but we're also so naive that we think, oh wow, we're we're with Edge. We we just ran in the main event of WrestleMania 24, helping Edge. I bet next year at WrestleMania it's gonna be a triple threat. Edge heads explode, hmm. and that's not what happened. Uh, the Edgeheads were over. We were still Hawkins and Ryder. We weren't with Edge, and we were Lumberjacks in the pre-show tag team <laughs> match. So what a fall from grace. Well, you say naive, but I, I just see that confidence that you're talking about where you just know that there's going to be some sort of success. You know, So like, I, I guess it's a little naive, little confidence, whatever, yeah. uh, to think that. But Edge gets hurt. Um, you guys are kind of like just still the Edge guys you win well, the tag the team titles we're, we're randomly just the, we're just the edge guys even Shawn right. michaels on tv calls us the edge guys because he forgets our names <laughs> and i don't blame him because for a while we were just literally dressing in edges gear when the original plan was to do that edge thing that one night and then have our own gear made um we had the gear made but then they decided just keep wearing the edge stuff and by the time they decided to let us be our own guys it was it was too late Hmm. you know we were just the jabroni edgehead guys the guys that looked like edge we were hawkins and Ryder, but which one was hawkins which one was Ryder? yep yeah it was it was so speaking of that let's back up a little bit um because i think this is important zach Ryder. Hmm. um originally you are the major brothers yeah then that changes to just the majors right so i get to Deep South. I'm Brett Matthews yep. on the Indies. Brian Myers is Brian Myers. Yep. At this time, they are changing everybody's names, right? So I need, um, I want to be Brett something with an M because it's on my boots. I already have, I have one pair of boots that has the BM on it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know exactly so, what you mean. Yeah. So, so Stryker, Matt Stryker comes up with the name Majors, yep. Brett Majors. Okay, okay. I like that. Right. 
And then we present it to Bill, Bill DeMott, and Bill DeMott's like, yeah, Brett and Brian Majors, the Major Brothers. Like, Wait, what? We're brothers? Well, yeah, you guys you're look twins. alike. Now, what? <laughs> now you couldn't look any different. Like, right. like, like you guys look so different. But back so, then, man. I guess the story was we were the kind of twins that don't look alike, not identical. <laughs> I, I thought you looked like. But right. sure. Uh, Long so hair. So it was Majors long. Brothers, which is kind of like a tongue twister. Majors Brothers. Oof. Yeah. So we do one night of ECW as the Majors Brothers, and then it switches. No, you're the Major Brothers, which I actually like better. Thank God. So I'm Brett Major. He's Brian Major. Uh, we do the Edgehead thing, and I guess in the meeting on SmackDown the next week or two days later, whatever, Vince McMahon finds out that we're not really brothers. <laughs> Okay. okay, so he wants us to, you know, tell the world our real names, but of course not our real names, our fake real names. So, so when the first hours. time you show up for with Edge, you are technically Brett and Brian Major. Yes, okay. and then we walk out to the ring with him on SmackDown as the Major Brothers. Okay. And in the ring, we announce who we really are. Okay. Um, and I announce that I'm Zack Ryder. And that he is Kurt Hawkins. How long did um, you have to come up with Zack Ryder? A few hours. Okay. Um, at first, I was going to be... I knew I wanted to be Zack. Z-A-C-K from Zack Morris. And originally, I was going to be Zack McKay, like Dylan McKay. <laughs> Zack McKay. <laughs> yeah. And then somehow, it got switched to Ryder. Because you know, we wrote a bunch of first and last names up. What sounds the best? Yep. And then I knew I wanted to be Z-A-C-K, not H, and R-Y-D-E-R. And that was approved. And that's what, that's what it was. Okay, and Ryder didn't come from, it was just like, well, that sounds nice. I, I can't recall where that came from. Got it. All right, so uh, back, you, you guys are the edgeheads, you're kind of floundering. Uh, you, you win the tag team titles randomly, which is neat, but whatever. And then We're literally paper champions. We're still technically with edge when we win them. Yep. Hometown, Long Island, New York, we win them. Awesome, right? Great match. But the nameplate they give us is paper. It's literally a paper nameplate. And they never switch it out. So when we lose them, it's still paper. Okay. So we're literally paper champions. Right. Um, so I guess we lose them as soon as like Edge gets injured. Okay. Right. Now- so, then, so then at that point, we're told, we have a meeting with Vince McMahon. And we're told, we're going to split you guys up. We're going to send you to Stanford to have, to have these meetings with the writers. We're going to come up with new things. Okay. I'm cool with that. It never happens, though. We keep right. getting brought to random TVs to lose against like Kung Fu Naki in singles action or lose to Finley and Hornswoggle or lose to uh, Great Kelly in handicap matches. So we're still on TV. We're still Hawkins and Ryder, but we're just like two guys. And then right. that's when we started pitching. Okay. I started doing the woo, woo, woo stuff because right. I wanted to be um, as different from Brian as possible. So I was going to be over the top. He was going to kind of be like the straight man. You know what I'm saying? And we we actually put up this video. It's on the Major Pod Network YouTube channel of yeah. our original pitch. Right. This, um, this The skit that you guys shot. So yeah. I'll put the I'll put the uh, the link to that in the description of these. But yeah, it, it's uh, my cousin, John Gravina, he, he edited that. Big props. Oh, nice. uh, so it, it was on the radar, but nothing was happening, you know. And then when the there's a draft that year and I get drafted to ECW, Brian stays on SmackDown, and that's where it's like, okay, we're going to do your idea, Matt, or Zach, whatever, but without Brian. Okay. So I think we were both fine with it. We knew it needed to happen. And it was it was nerve-wracking because I'd only had a handful of singles matches my whole life. I'd been with Brian since basically when I started. Wow, that's So true. it was nerve-wracking, but I knew this was my opportunity, especially on ECW, um, to, I had, I had a blank canvas, so to speak. So I could be who, who is Zack Ryder? And I literally, I drew it. I think my mom still has it framed at the house. Uh, one legged tights, orange spiked hair, uh, the sunglasses, because I was going, I was 22, 23 at the time. I was going out to the clubs, the club on Long Island, New York city. <laughs> and I saw all these guys, uh, that I hated these douchebags, these like Long Island douchebags wearing the sunglasses inside, the pop collars, the the little chin strap beards, the uh, the diamond stud earrings. I hated these guys, but I knew I could do this on television. Right. This is before Jersey Shore. For heat. I hate when people say, right. "Oh, you're a Jersey Shore ripoff," or change that Jersey Shore gimmick. No, 
It was my gimmick. Right. <laughs> it was my gimmick. So May 5th, 2009 is when you debuted the Zack Ryder character. Now, you you cut your hair for this. Yeah, and that's was something that I wanted to do with Hawkins. I wanted to cut the hair because okay. I, I knew we were just two guys that people thought were the edge guys. So with this, this is my chance. I knew, okay, if they don't know my name, they're going to know I'm either the one-legged tights guy or the woo-woo-woo guy. Right. And that was fine. At least they knew something. At least they knew who I was. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, you, you sort of have to stand out if somebody's just looking at you for 10 seconds. Right. So was there any backlash to the haircutting? Or did you, did you get permission to do that? No, I got permission. Okay. I got permission. Yeah. Like, I'm going to cut my hair and spike yep. it and tan yep. myself like even yep. more and do the one-legged tights. Yeah. They're like, okay. I remember the one-legged tights thing. Um, a lot of the writers were hesitant. They wanted me to wear jeans and like uh, a button-down shirt, uh, pop collar, like I'm going to the club. But then like when I take the shirt off, I'd be wearing jeans. What am I, like Jimmy Wang Yang? What's the difference? Mm. So I, I really wanted this one-legged tights thing. And they said, like, go talk to Vince about it. And I went up to Vince while he was, like, busy, uh, you know, uh, doing rehearsals. And, like, I showed Vince. And he, like, I don't know what he said. But he basically, he didn't say, wow, this is great. I love it. He said something like, whatever. And I said, oh, Vince loves it. You know, I just spun it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Such a huge so thing So I did do. ask him technically. Or I said, hey, Vince, I'm going to wear it. Whatever it was. Yep. You know, he didn't say no. But he didn't say, like, I love it. You know what All I'm right. saying? Yeah. I, it makes total sense. And I can see you doing it. Yeah, he loved it. Um, so I said May fifth, two thousand nine. ECW ends February of twenty ten. But that one year, that's a pretty big push there for you in ECW. It was awesome. Uh, it was awesome for me. I do think looking back, uh, obviously you can't live in regret. I do wish, uh, you know, I was in better shape. Like, I do wish I was a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. I do wish, uh, you know, my wrestling skills were a little sharper. Uh, you know, but that's the. A lot of people, they grow in high schools and bingo halls on the indies. I'm growing on live TV. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, yeah. I, I wouldn't change that experience for the world. You know? So uh, You're still having tons of live event matches and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. And, and, you know, I was having great matches. Um, you know, guys like Christian, Regal, Tommy Dreamer. Uh, the, the learning experience I was getting was invaluable. And I was, I was gaining confidence because I was getting promo time. I was able to work on the character. Um, you know, and like even like the the Zack Ryder one legged tights guy, woo woo guy, like even he evolves in the ECW days because like in the beginning I'm just playing like the Long Island douchebag, and by the end it's me with some Long Island douchebag in it. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, for sure. Like I incorporate more of me right. as opposed to playing the Long Island douchebag. Yep, hundred percent. Yeah. So great run there. Um, obviously, like you said, um, great feuds with some some people that really taught you still talk about Christian to this day, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now February, 2010, we talk about February a lot. <laughs> February, 2010 is the death of ECW. Uh, and you are now on SmackDown, right? Raw. So raw. So now you go to raw, but this uh, is like the one year that is, there is nothing. You were doing I so great. I was devastated because I felt like every year of my career, you know, 2003, I start. You know. Okay. 2004, I have my first match. 2005, okay. uh, I wrestle in Madison Square Garden as, a, as an extra, which at the time I thought was the biggest deal in the world. Okay. You know? Yep. 2006, I get signed. 2007, I make my WWE debut. 2000, yep. You know, like, yep. I keep like, 2008, I, hey, I'm yes. at WrestleMania. Yeah. 2009, I do the woo-woo-woo. 2010, <laughs> you know what okay. I'm saying? Nothing. Nothing all and, year. Superstars matches, random yeah, stuff. I'm on Raw a lot, and and I really like. I knew that I was in trouble as soon as I get to Raw, and there was like a triple threat match for a. It was a Money in the Bank qualifier, and um, I heard early in the day that it was going to be me versus MVP versus Mark Henry, and they were teaming at the time. Now, listen, this is all pure speculation. Okay. In my head, I'm thinking like, oh my God, like something's going to happen where there's miscommunication and I, I beat one of them to qualify and go to, to mania and money in the bank. Right. right. <laughs> but then I, this is just me speculating. I have yeah. no idea. Right. But throughout the day, it gets changed straight up me versus MVP. I lose. Huh? So I'm thinking like, and I have no idea what happened. Yep. I'm not saying I was supposed to win. Maybe I was supposed to lose the triple threat match. I don't know. 
Right. But once I didn't qualify for money in the bank, I knew there are no plans for me on this brand. I see. Okay. So that's one year of sort of nothing. Now, let me, I just want to read this out to you. Maybe, okay. maybe jog your memory. And about uh, 2011. So 2011 starts. You're in the Royal Rumble. Okay. That's pretty neat. Yep. Right? Now, I'm going to tell you all your matches leading up to this debut show. Okay. okay. Here's what Zack Ryder is doing in 2011. You got the Royal Rumble. Then on 131-11, uh, David Hart Smith and Yoshi Tatsu defeat Primo and Zack Ryder. 12 minutes. Okay. That's oh, a how oh, show. That's, that's got it. Oh, so, Superstars. Superstar. Superstar. Sorry. Yeah. Superstars. Then at a house show, Mark Henry defeats Zack Ryder. <laughs> then at a house show, R Truth defeats Zack Ryder. Then on a dark match at Raw, Percy Watson defeats Zack Ryder. <laughs> then at a house show, Primo defeats Zack Ryder. This is 2 11 11. 2 12 11, Primo defeats Zack Ryder. 2 13 11, Mark Henry defeats Zack Ryder in California. And then 2 15 11, Santino Morella and Vladimir Kozlov defeat Primo. And Zack Ryder on Superstars episode number 97 uh, in San Diego, California. Mm. Any memory of that run leading up to this, this show? Not really. Uh, I mean, like you said, it was nothing great. I, uh, I will say I had a couple you know, good matches on there, a couple of glimmers of hope. And I remember Jericho pulled me aside and said, you know, you got to get out of that one legged tight thing. You know, it worked. It was a gimmick. It got mm-hmm. you noticed, but now you got to be taken more serious. And he was completely right. And I switched to the trunks. Um, I think at that time I start teaming with, with Primo on like superstars. And then we're called DZP, like down with Zach and Primo. Uh, by this time, like Jersey Shore is popular, very popular. So I'm confused why they're not using ah, me. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but and then and, and I would do stuff with like the celebrities on the show, like Johnny Knoxville or Buzz Aldrin or uh, uh, Ashton Kutcher. I do stuff like that, but right. I'm never, you know, it's never about me, never for me, and that's fine. It's never gonna, you know, not everyone could be world champion, not everyone yeah. could be undefeated, but I just wasn't happy with what I was doing. And like we said earlier, every year I was accomplish accomplishing something. I felt like I didn't really accomplish anything. And I needed to at least try to change that. All right. Now, here we are. What is the genesis of the creation of this show? Uh, Why? What was the initial idea? And then, like, who were you getting your inspiration from? So, where is it? I had it here somewhere. Okay. It all starts with this flip camera. Okay. I got this for Christmas that year. I had asked for it. Um, I knew that I wanted it for something. I didn't know. I knew I wanted to do something, start filming something, documenting something. Uh, I didn't quite know what it was going to be. Um, And then like, obviously I'm sure, listen, I didn't, I wasn't the first person to have a web show, a YouTube show. Right. You know, WWE.com had their own things. I wasn't the first person on social media. No way. Ms. Morrison were like doing some cool stuff at the time, right? But I thought like, what if I start this YouTube show almost as an advertisement for myself, right. not to be a YouTube guy, but to kind of, you know, get myself over Sure. To, to prove that I have personality, to prove that, uh, you know, I bring something to the table and you watch episode one. I'm trying to be funny. I'm trying to do skits. It's so bad. It's so cringeworthy <laughs> bad. We'll talk about um, that. But it, that's just what it, what it was. It was like, okay, this is my, my outlet, you know what I'm saying? My creative outlet and my, my chance to shine. And I knew this was at a time where like you couldn't really do things on your own. Mm. And I knew that the whole time I just wanted to create some buzz. I didn't want to be bitter. I wanted to just create buzz, be controversial. Um, and if that buzz got me fired, then so be it. I wanted to get noticed or get fired. I didn't want to get fired. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to get noticed by WWE. Right. But I knew if I did get fired, I would have buzz to go to TNA or go do something else. Sure. So it was just create buzz. Get noticed or get fired, but just create buzz. How much thought went into like what you were going to do on this show, like formats and things like that? Or was it just like, ah, I'm just going to do I this? I mean, for that particular episode, I don't quite remember. 
Um, like I said, I, I, I found the, the old laptop. It worked. So I have it all. Like, I yep. want to watch that back uh, to see if there's anything that didn't make the episode. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and maybe do you we'll, have we'll, all the footage like on a drive or on a laptop somewhere? For like episode everything. one, I do. For episode one, I do. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't know for every other episode. I got to check. Okay. Um, so I don't quite recall like what the, of course, I, I must have had some sort of plan. And then going forward, obviously, it, it progresses. And, you know, there's a format and I'm writing it all week and I'm taking it very, very seriously. And I'm, I'm taking it seriously here. I just don't know what it's going to become. It's interesting how, like, you know, further on in the show, you get so, like, married to, like, the the, the open, the this segment, the that segment. Your outro is the same. I always love yeah. that as somebody who is, like, OCD. So. so I think around this time I start watching somebody on YouTube called Ray William Johnson. Okay. And he had a show called Equals Three. And I just yep. love that there was a format. Right. They all started the same. They all ended the same. And throughout the show, you knew, you didn't know what you were going to see, but you knew what you were going to see. You know what I'm saying? For sure. A hundred percent. And and that's what I was going uh, for with this. Yes. Yes. It, it, it like uh, makes you feel better when you know what, what you're getting into. Right. Um, yeah. So you talked about the... Was there a specific, uh, you know, I read you those matches because I wanted to see if anything jogged. Like, are you sitting, like, <laughs> catering in, like, Bakersfield, California, and you're just, like, eating this bad chicken, and you're like, this has to happen? Or well, I, I, I don't it was know. It b- built you know, up. I, I, I was booked on not every Loop of Live events, but some. And, yep. you know, I probably work 90% of the TVs, whether it be Raw or Superstars. Right. But if I'm home, I was bored, you know, and I lived, um, if you know anything about Long Beach, New York, that's where I was living at the time. Yeah. And Long Beach, New York is like 25 minutes away from civilization, which like at that time felt like eternity. So like nobody wanted to come into Long Beach and I didn't want to like leave Long Beach. I'd be like sit, just sitting in my apartment all day and it was like the winter time and there's like nothing to do and it's like it's dark early and I just wanted to like be productive. I think I was yeah. just like bored, bored right. sitting home, you know? Yeah, for sure. All right, you want to talk about this first episode? Yeah, so I, I, got, I got some notes. Um, first thing that stands out to me, no backdrop. I'm just... Yeah. Uh, you even mentioned it in the episode, yeah. so, so it was on your mind. Yeah, I'm just sitting in my, uh, I guess, living room, dining room of my apartment at the time in Long Beach. No logo. Uh, it just fades up to you. Fades you awkwardly up. don't say I'm, anything so, for two seconds. Full disclosure, the whole time I edit everything myself. Okay. I don't, I teach myself how to use iMovie, which is on the, the MacBook, right. you know? So it has like the, the cheesy little transitions. Oh, horrible. Um, Every <laughs> time that you stop speaking, you, you do like a weird long transition, which are full like two seconds. Well, and I think that becomes like a signature of the show, those transitions. Right. It's kind of like uh, Star Wars has those bad like yeah. clock wipes. <laughs> um, and like, I was just learning how to, to do just the, just putting the files from the, the flip camera to the right. computer was like, like mind blowing to figure it out. Or once I, I did figure it out, Brian doesn't still doesn't know it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so episode one, 900, 935,370 views on it right now. I just watched, I just watched that. So I just looked at that up. Actually looked that up. Take a shot. So why I think that has so many more views than the others. Well, people want to jump in and see the first thing. Well, I don't necessarily think that. I think because when people heard about the show, even WWE people, they would just type in, and that's the first thing to pop up. That's why I get so many views. Right, for sure. And like I was, I always hated that because that the worst one. Were start, what's up? It's the worst one. It's, it's like one of the worst ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if like, exactly. if by like episode thirty, I'm trying to get Vince McMahon to to watch, and he watches that one, well, that's not what I want you to watch. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I know exactly I, I'm just, what you mean. I'm just speaking hypothetically. I feel the same way. I mean, our major wrestling figure podcasts have gotten better. You know, if sure. somebody's jumping in, I hope hopefully and, and, and they this don't one is going to be cringeworthy where people are listening to episode you know thirty, <laughs> right? Exactly. This. Um, but yeah, so what stood out to me was the uh, the no backdrop and also the shirt I was wearing. Okay, so I'm wearing a basic shirt. Uh, it was called Basic on the WWE shop or the shop zone at the time. So like an authentic shirt, let's say it's like twenty five bucks. I want to say these are like. 20 or 15 or 12, something like that. It's a discount shirt. Okay. So I must have been doing something right on social media where I was getting enough people asking to make a shirt that they made me this. They threw me a bone. 
Okay, this is your first WWE shirt, and you're plugging it hard on this. I'm plugging it hard. And what I literally did is I mailed an autograph to everybody who bought a shirt who took a picture wearing it. Right. Legitimately, I had all these tops cards, uh, and I signed the cards, and I would mail them out. And I did that. Um, so somebody would reach out to you on Twitter, and then you would, same, same as you do now, you'd send them a message, be like, what's your address, and send it to them? Yep. Now it was it was easier to do because there wasn't that many people buying them, but still enough where <laughs> right. it was it was picking up steam. I think that's one of the coolest things about this first episode. Um, you and we'll talk about this a lot in the future. I think the audience participation was becoming huge. pivotal, like joining the writer revolution, or like you know being in your on your team is really what makes people I think watch this show. And you did that right away, where right. you've given now the the people watching it not just entertainment but something to do yeah and and that the interaction it was key uh especially with that shirt when that shirt came out i remember so i bought them off wb shop and i would wear them on tv or superstars or whatever and it would be like my shirt that i bought and i was right. looking through like old emails because i still have my old hotmail account uh, and those are going to come up a lot in this this podcast okay. but i found an email because i had taken my shirt off and like just thrown it out of the ring. And somebody who was like a stagehand or whatever just threw it into the crowd to somebody. <laughs> and I was like, no, I need that shirt back. That's my <laughs> That's only my shirt. shirt. <laughs> That's my only shirt. I need it back. They so didn't I have like the merch guys like they do now where they just they give did, you the but they, they did. They weren't bringing Zack Ryder's basic shirt to the building. I see. Okay. Right? right. So I found these emails that I don't think they know I'm on the email chain. And right. they're talking about how like Zack Ryder made like a girl cry. So can we please send him like a John Cena shirt or something like that? And then I respond like, uh, I'm sorry, but it's my only shirt. I bought it myself. I'm trying to, you know, get publicity for it. Uh, sorry, I needed it back. Something like that. I, right. I'm, you know, paraphrasing. Right, right, right. But <laughs> this is, wow, that's insane. Yeah. Um, so the, the episode itself is three minutes and 47 seconds. Was there any um, thought process to like how long these things were going to be? Yeah, Back in the to, day, YouTube videos that like sh th they wanted you to be shorter. Like, I mean, that was kind of like the formula. Today, what are, what are you saying? I mean, I, I feel like back in the day, like oh, back videos, in the day, it was like three minutes was like snackable. Boom. Yes. Watch exactly. it while you're taking a dump. Right now, we're putting up twenty minute vlogs where right. you're looking but, at maximum I think sweat that's figures. That's what people like now. Right. Yes, I agree. Um, at the time, yes, I tried to keep them around that three, three or four minute time period. Right. And obviously that, later on they get longer, six minutes. Some of them get seven. longer, yeah. Yeah. Um so I'm looking at these notes here. I have down the 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 flip camera. I have, you know, the the background, the transition, the autographs. What about that elite figure? That's okay. The first huge. Yeah. Uh I'm I'm going to so I'm gonna do something uh on this show, guys. I'm gonna track things. Okay. So okay. there's a lot of things I'm gonna track and and as the episodes go on, I'll I'll add more things to my list. But currently, right now, I'm tracking characters. Okay. So the first character debuted on the show, Zack Ryder. Okay. Okay. This is your first appearance in Z True <laughs> Long Island story. I'm sure you'll have many more. But also, the other thing that I want to track is action figures. Obviously, if you don't know, uh, Matt is the Michael Jordan of wrestling figure collecting. Uh, he has his own wrestling figure uh, podcast. Figures are very important. So I want to see how many times action figures come into play in these 100 episodes. Now, full disclosure, I wasn't really collecting at this time. Right. Um, because, you know, not to bore you with figure talk, but Jax had the, the license for so long. I had a huge collection. They lost the license. And I was heartbroken that I had to almost start over with Mattel. Okay. So I refused. And then, like, I wasn't in any lineup. So I really refused okay. to buy any figures. Um but then my elite figure came out. And what I also, now that like we're thinking about this or talking about this, wasn't there a show called like, like The Soup on E? Yes. I think that's where I got like a lot of in, uh, influence from. Like I wanted to take topical things and apply them to me. Got it. You know what I'm oh, saying? 100%. So The Rock comes back and you, I'm about to talk about The Rock, but I plug my new action figure and then I do something silly with The Rock action figure in me. Right. Um, and I must have went to Ringside Collectibles to get your figure. Um, the rock and that ring and the Zack Ryder because I wasn't collecting figures at the time. They didn't I'm send like, you a bunch of your own or uh, they might've when this came uh, out, you were really excited though. 
This yeah, elite. But, oh, oh my god, of course. So this is ECW character, one legged tights elite. Yes, yes. Okay. I think also my basic came out at the same time. Maybe it came out first. I'm not quite sure the timetable. I think actually the basic in trunks comes out before the one legged elite, which okay. is kind of weird. Right. But interesting. But yeah, I wanted to plug the figure, and of course, right. the Rock came back. Do something timely with that. Right. For sure. All right. Uh, and which is also wh- weird. Starting the year doing action figure, you know, figure photography with the rock. And then at the end of the year, you know, rocks in the ring, they're chanting for me. So kind of pretty cool. Wow. Interesting. You start versus the rock. Holy crap. Wow. Interesting. All right. Were you afraid at all? Bro, (laughs) you cut to yourself playing with action figures in a ring in 2011. You talk about this a lot on the major wrestling figure podcast about how, man, if Undertaker f- heard that there were some guys in his locker room playing with action figures, like in 2004, like there'd be problems. So 2011, you put out on in public on YouTube <laughs> a video of you playing mm. yourself. In, it's just so crazy. Not now. Now everyone understands sure. that's normal for you. Were you afraid of any kind of backlash or getting no. made fun of or anything? I, I think I would just had enough. I had okay. reached that breaking point, and I was going to go all in. Uh, so to speak, I was going to bet on myself and, you know, and and hope for the best, no real game plan, except, you know, as a kid, I knew I had to make it in WWE and still at that time, I'm 25, I have to make it in WWE. I'm happy to be here, but I'm not just happy to be here. Um, and I want to, I was so careful and we'll, we'll get to this in, 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 in future episodes. I didn't want to be negative or anti WWE or bitter. I always wanted to be self deprecating, funny comical uh and at the time i think it's important to note i'm a heel on tv right you know so i don't mind looking like an idiot sure playing with the toys because i'm a heel you know what i'm saying so it's a weird fine line to walk um the next thing that you plug is uh jericho's book because you wrote the forward how the heck does that happen how how do you write jericho's forward so (laughs) when you're not doing anything on raw my memory is shot. It really is. But some things do stick out. I remember being in Puerto Rico. I want to say it's Puerto Rico. Maybe it's not. I want to say it's Puerto Rico. And Jericho is, is writing his book. He's talking about his book. I think he mentions that Foley. He got Foley to write the forward. And I said something like, you know, hey, bro, like how come, how come you didn't ask me to write the forward? <laughs> mm-hmm. You know? And like as a joke, I write one via Twitter. Okay. Right? And then he takes it and puts it in the book as a bonus forward without even telling me. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't know that. Which was a, which was a huge deal for me. <laughs> right. I Hell thought it was yeah. great. Yeah. So okay. I say like in the book or on the episode, you got to go by the book, like, but it's genuinely in there. Yeah. I'm a published author. That's cool. I love or that. A published writer, whatever you want to say. Um, all right. And then the last thing you sort of do, in my opinion, that's big in this episode is for no reason at all, you <laughs> just start singing a boy band song. You, this you, is, this you is the also, whole thing. This is also uh, uh, on my notes. So I'm singing Justin Bieber. I had Bieber fever at that time. This is before he really gets big, in my Bieber, opinion. okay. All right. Yeah, it's not Justin a boy Bieber. Band. Yeah. Um, and I'm also wearing headphones with cords on them, so I'm really dating myself. <laughs> <laughs> As we're both wearing headphones with cords. Well, but, well yeah. I mean, yes, but ours are plugged into like recording yeah. devices. Right, right, right. Um, I knew, I think I had been doing some videos like on Twitter where I'm singing and I would, uh, so I was just kind of incorporating that. Like I said, I wasn't afraid to look like a fool. True or to false? Be entertaining. You were in choir in high school. I was in choir, concert choir in high school. You had to try out for that, so you couldn't just like be in it. What was the song you used to try out? Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember. It Some wasn't like of... you weren't doing any cool songs, you know. Oh, okay. That was it's not like Crescendo. American Idol. Crescendo, you know? <laughs> Crescendo did the cool songs. Okay. I was just in concert choir. All right, so you just sing this song for no reason. You really get into it. Get that fist pumping down. Right, but I wrote kind of like a a really smart first episode. You just do a bunch of random stuff. You do a boy band thing, figures. You plug your merch. It's really so much Matt Cardona still now to this day, but it's also like a a snapshot of what the show will become, but just That's exactly what it is. It's almost like a teaser. Like, here's everything I can show you week one. Yeah. Here are the kind of things you're going to see 
if you continue to watch. That's kind of what it was. Um, even at the end, I say something about like Kesha liking my beer. That really dates myself with Kesha, <laughs> who, was, who was really hot in 2011. Um, right. But yeah, and at the end, I don't have, I'm looking like, I say the woo, 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 you know it, like very slow. But you don't have follow me on Twitter. I don't have any of that yet. Yeah. Um, I'm doing the woo, 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 you know it very slow because um, I'm a heel. And, and I remember, I think while I'm in ECW, I start doing it as a woo, 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 like that. And yeah. Vince wants it more like woo, woo, woo. So that's how why, I- Wait, wait, why does Vince care about- Because it's more, I get it's more serious. I don't know, whatever. So that's how I'm doing it. Um, <laughs> but whatever. I don't know. So I, 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 it just, th- those are my notes. Um, but like you said, it's just a little taste. Right. Uh, a, a, a bun- it's like a, I don't know, like a pizza pie, but every slice is different. Yep. A bunch of different well, toppings. There's going to be some crazy stuff coming up. Uh, you know, hey, debuts, Chiapetta, Big O, your dad. Like, we'll yeah. see when they come in, factor in, and, and, and what happens going forward. We're going to see these views go up, go down. We're going to see when WWE people start popping in and wanting to, right. to talk about it. And, and um, one thing one thing I knew going forward is that if I say this podcast is going to come out every Thursday or this YouTube show is going to come out every Thursday, it better come out every Thursday. Well, oh, baby, I'm, I'm with you. Now, there wasn't an exact time. There wasn't. It, it would just come out Thursday because I'd be editing it, filming it, writing it all myself. So some days or some weeks, I wasn't on the live a live event, so I'd have more time than others. Eventually, I guess to a point where I'm on five days a week, and I, I you always hear wrestlers over exaggerating how long they're on the road. They count like their days that they fly home and the days they fly out as days on the road. I'm talking literally shows. I was on five shows a week. Right. I would do the Raw live event, the Raw live event, the Raw live event, the Raw TV, and then I would go to SmackDown. So that's five days, right? So I would fly home on Wednesdays and be home, whatever. I get home at 11 a.m., 12, whatever. So half a day, Thursday, fly out Friday. So I was home a day and a half, and I'm still filming these, writing these, editing these all on my own. That's you know how it gets towards right. the end. Right. But at the time, I had no problem working hard, and I still, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer in this. Hard you still do it now, where it's th- three in the morning on a Saturday, and you're like, Mark, where's the uh, <laughs> email to the... <laughs> yeah. if, if you love what you do, yeah. then it doesn't feel like work. So I did not care that I was putting in all this work. Um, and obviously, that first episode... It looks so bare bones. It probably took me hours to edit that, you know, because I didn't yeah, know what I was doing. For sure. And eventually, I add transitions, and eventually, a lot of fans do help, and we'll give them credit when credit when credit is due. Yeah. Uh, for for supplying me like lower thirds or graphics or songs, so I can't wait to to see the evolution uh, of this show, and, and you know, and we're gonna have guests. And yeah, and this was a longer one. Some might be long. Some might be short. We're going to have guests on. We're going to have these people that made music. We're going to have the, 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 hey, your dad's going to be on in some way. So, yeah. And, and, and the end goal, I would love to do a reunion episode, but I want, I want the, uh, the demand to really be there as opposed yeah. to just dropping it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, um, all right. And then the last thing I want to ask you about this episode specifically what was there any response at all to this, or was it completely no sold until the next episode? By like office, you mean? Anybody? Did did Ziggler walk up to you and go, "I saw your thing, funny"? So anybody? I do think some of the boys saw it. Um, my, this is where my memory is not good, but I do recall in these early episodes. I don't know if it's this one exactly, where guys like CM Punk or John Cena are retweeting it, which is huge for me. Hell yeah, okay. Because back then Twitter was so small, a retweet was big. Yep. Now you can retweet whatever. You know what I'm right. saying? Like yeah. even Twitter, I don't think it's as powerful as people think it is. Mm-hmm. At the same time, it is very powerful. Right. But you know, right now I have two point something million followers. That doesn't mean two point something million people are going to listen to this podcast when I post the link. You right. know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wish it worked that way. It doesn't work yeah. that way. But at the time, to have a Cena or a Punk or a Ziggler or whatever uh, retweet it was 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 huge. Right. All right, so each week we're going to give you guys an opportunity to ask Matt a question. I would love to keep these uh, 
more specific to that episode, I would love it if you guys watched the episode and then ask a question based on that. Know that I'm going to ask some questions. It has to be episode specific. Okay. That's how I think this works. And guys, going forward, use the hashtag KnowYourBro. Love it. And you will get um, an 8x10 signed, sealed, and delivered to you. Um, Every week, we'll, we'll give one out. Perfect. So what is the question this week? Just use the hashtag know your bro, ask the question. Make sure you watch the episode. So if you want to be on next week, if you want a chance to win the 8x10, watch episode two, yep. which is on youtube.com slash the Matt Cardona. Yep. And uh and ask a question. Right. All right. Uh this is from Adam B at play D U C. <clears throat> How much do you attribute the show to your parents? after they gift you to the flip camera that you talk about. Have you ever sat down and had a discussion with them just to let them know how much it means to have parents that have supported you your whole life? Oh, I mean, my, the, the support for my parents uh, is incredible. Do I credit them for the show because they got me the camera? No, but I mean, I do credit them for so much, for supporting me uh, my whole life, you know, and especially like with this show, like my dad becomes like a character mm. in the show. Right. You know what I'm saying? My dad, you know, drives to, you know, I don't want to spoil her. When I win the U.S. title in Baltimore, he drives to Baltimore. You know, my dad was super support. My mom, too. Uh, but it's not like they're like, ooh, we're going to get him this flip camera for Christmas. And he's going to say, that's not what happened. Right. I asked for the camera. Right. Okay. Um, so, I, I mean, thank you, mom and dad, for the camera. Sure. And I credit them so much for all of the support that they gave me and love over the years. Uh, it means so much. And to have them, you know. The majority of my special moments in WWE, not only are they there, but they're somehow, you know, but if they're not front row, at least they're there, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, So it's very, very special that I have uh, memories like that. And yeah, uh, you know, without their support, this wouldn't have been possible. But, you know, let's be honest. They didn't, we can't thank them for the show because they got me the camera. (laughs) Okay, got it. Uh, but, But yeah, and the camera is so special because like, I tried to like load this. I have another one too. There's a second one. This is the first. This is the original one. Then you get a better one. And I get like it's still a flip though. Right. It's actually like chiapetas that I take. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and that one won't even load up. <laughs> right. Okay. So this one like still loads up. Uh, the screen's all cracked. It's crazy what this flip camera becomes because like I guess at the time you could use your cell phone for videos, but maybe not. I don't even remember. It was just 2011. A different era. There's iPhones, so yeah. But, yeah, I, don't, but I, don't, I think I the don't. phone videos aren't even close. In 2011, I got a flip phone camera too, and I had a phone that could record video. But I think the phone video would be like 480p, and then the the flip was like you could get HD. So right. I think and, that was the deal. The flip, like I end up, uh, it becomes such a trademark to me. I end up coming to the ring with it. I think uh, we need a flip camera shirt. What's that? Uh, well, I think we need a flip camera shirt of some we sort. We could do that. Yeah. Um, I it was not with any of my action figures, but it's in one of the video games, which I think is cool. Oh, the flip camera. Yeah, that's that's neat. Um, it just became like my signature, and it was it was legitimate. Like I brought that thing everywhere. Yeah. Um, you know, I did brought you have it, a special bag or, no, or uh, yeah, there might have been a little bag. There might have been a little bag. Uh, but I brought it everywhere because it was you know it was so essential to me. I'd be able I'd bring it to the ring with me. I'd capture footage there capture footage backstage in the apartment um you know out on the town uh it was such a pivotal piece Mm. where nowadays you know you just use your cell phone uh and even this there was no like front facing camera so a lot of the shots it's like i think i'm in it you know like (laughs) yeah i I don't even think i had a tripod for the first episode i think i just like stacked it up on a bunch of things and like like you can see i have the footage like there's a bunch of tests like you know to make sure i'm in the scene in the shot oh yeah i know know exactly because for sure because there's no way to tell. Right. You know? Huh. It's it's just a, a wild, like, evolution uh, of technology, you know, not only over these past 10 years, but even within the two years of the, the episodes. Right. All right. Well, uh, I just, I mentioned the shirt thing. Um, I'm going to tell you this right now, Matt. I, I in On the YouTube video, I'm going to try to wear a different wrestling shirt for every episode of the show. Just, okay. I'm, I'm saying that right now for everybody okay. who's watching. So today I'm wearing our Major Wrestling Figure Podcast turtle-themed mm. t-shirt, um, but Ninja Turtle-themed. But you can also find some MC True Long Island Story shirts already available, right? 
That's right. So the MC True Long Island Story, the logo shirt is on Pro Wrestling Tees dot com slash major wf pod but there's also a broski of the week shirt and the shirt that i'm wearing in that episode ttd wrestling has updated it so it's matt cardona that's also those shirts are on prosingtees.com slash matt cardona so we're getting the merch we're gonna start doing the plugs and here's another thing guys like if you think like i'm gonna start like I guess my hair is kind of spiked, but not like how it was then. But I'm not going to start wearing the glasses and the headbands and doing the fist pump and the woo woo woo. You know, it. like we're not going backwards here. This is a, a trip down memory lane. It's something I'm very proud of. And in the, the ten years, it just flew by. Yep. Right. So it's 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 fun. It's also scary to look back at that time. Um, and I hope you guys really enjoy it. And 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 listen, all feedback is encouraged. Sure. We want this show to be enjoyable for everybody. So whatever we can do, um, I- I'm just excited and nervous, but it should yeah, be a I'm, fun little journey. I want to try to get a lot of stuff out of you. I want to ask you some, uh, so we'll, we'll get to some points where we're asking some serious questions. Um, I also do want to get that snapshot of pro wrestling. So, you know, going forward, we'll talk more about what's going on in pro wrestling at the time, you know, um, in addition to, to just your career. So Yeah, and I, I think also, that. you know, um, next week or in every following episode, we'll have a little follow up. Oh, damn, I forgot about this. Sure. Or, oh, someone tweeted me about this. Here's this memory. Yep. So I think that's the, the best part about all this. And, uh, you know, just like the first time, I, I want you guys along for the ride. Uh, you, you made it so successful the first time with that rider revolution. I don't really have a, a catchy name for this, but, you know, I, I thank you guys for the support. Um, over all these years, and, and, and this is going to be a fun little journey, and I can't wait for you guys to be a part of it. Cool. Well, I think that there's only one way to sign off the show, if you would take it away, please. Well, uh, I'm not going to do the same <laughs> the same ending, because I can't even <laughs> say woo-woo-woo, you know it anymore. <laughs> WWE owns that! Uh, I will say, uh, I don't even have a Facebook page. So I can't like even, me on Facebook. <laughs> I don't even have a Facebook page. WWE took that. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Instagram's a thing now. Yeah. <laughs> Instagram, Instagram wasn't around then. Right. Uh, buy all the merch on Pro Wrestling Tees. I guess I can still say this because it's the jingle at the end. Yeah. Take care. Spike your hair. Just take care.